For this week's clinical file, we have Yari, and Yari was recently given authorization f by her insurance company for an acute ankle sprain. After the authorization period, the therapist determines that the patient is no longer in need of therapy services. However, the patient requests to continue treatment. Which of the following is the most appropriate action? So we have A, allow the patient to pay out of pocket for additional therapy visits. B, discharge the patient to a home exercise program. C, write a letter to the insurance company requesting more visits. And D, treat the patient as a pro bono client. All right, so let's go up to the top, knock this one down. Obviously, this is this is one that is very difficult on the MPTE because you got to think through this the right way and not overthink it, not assume anything, not try to add too much of your clinical internship type of stuff into this question. Otherwise, it'll lead you astray. We're going to break it down piece by piece. Yari was recently given authorization by her insurance company for an acute ankle sprain. Okay, so that's first. So we know a lot of times, especially in outpatient therapy, our patients have to have like insurance or a lot of patients do, right? They have insurance and the insurance pays a certain amount and blah, 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 right? And for a lot of those insurances, they have authorization. They may authorize six visits. They may authorize six weeks of therapy, whatever it is for that particular insurance company, they authorize a certain amount. And so Yari in this question was given authorization for however long for her acute ankle sprain to get physical therapy. That's pretty straightforward. I'm good. Let's move on to the next sentence. It says, after the authorization period, so now the, the insurance company, let's just say the insurance company said this patient is able to go to therapy for four weeks, right? Now we're, we're done with the authorization period. The insurance company is pretty much saying, hey, the patient's done after four weeks. That's what this is saying. So after the authorization period. The therapist determines that the patient is no longer in need of therapy services. And I really want to slow up here because I think that this is important. The therapist determines that the patient is in is no longer in need of therapy services. What is that saying to you already? That's saying to you that the therapist has already found that the patient has reached that certain level where now they need to be discharged. That's what I'm hearing, that the patient has met their goals and the therapist sees no reason for the patient to continue, right? Now, it does say, however, the patient requests to continue treatment. So the patient is wanting to stay longer. Hmm, that poses a little dilemma. You may have seen this in your clinical rotation. So the last statement or last sentence of the question, it says, which of the following is the most appropriate action. So let's go down to the answer choice again for those of you on the podcast. A is allow the patient to pay out of pocket for additional therapy visits. B is discharge the patient to a home exercise program. C is write a letter to the insurance company requesting more visits. And D is to treat the patient as a pro bono client. Let's knock them down one by one. A, allow the patient to pay out of pocket for additional therapy visits. Should I do this? Should we allow the patient to pay out of pocket for additional therapy visits? Now, here is a lot of the thought process that, I, I mean, these are the things that I want to kind of say. I want to say, well, if the patient's going to pay for it out of their own pocket, then yeah, allow them to continue. That's kind of that people-pleasing oh, patient just wants to continue, and so I'm just going to allow them to have it. It's more of a, like a people-pleasing type thing. And I think as, as physical therapists, we fall into that trap a lot, making this a very attractive answer. It's like, yeah, you know what? They're asking me for it, so if they're going to pay, cool. Here's the thing. In the question, it does say that the therapist determines the patient is no longer in need of therapy services. So even if the patient requests to pay, they have the money to pay, that doesn't necessarily mean that they should be paying for therapy services. Why? Because you've already determined that your, your services are no longer needed. And even if you allowed them to pay, not only are you taking time away from other patients that really need that time slot, 
that actually do need therapy. So that's one problem, right? But the fact that now the PT would be treating the patient from a standpoint of, you know, the therapist not even seeing a reason for the patient to be there. Like, what are, you, what are we doing? Oh, so I'm just going to massage your back a little bit. I'm going to mobilize you a little bit or whatever it is, or have you just do some exercise in the clinic. I mean, that really is cheating the patient out of their money. Even though they're still paying for it, you know that there is no true need of the patient to be there. It's unethical. It's unethical behavior. All right. And so from a physical therapist standpoint, because they are the professional, it is in their obligation to let the patient know that, hey, listen, I'm, you know, I cannot treat you at this particular point. You know, we've met your goals, but possibly there's another avenue that we can go down. But to actually continue to treat the patient, come on, that's unethical behavior. All right. And, and it really goes against, you know, a lot of our core ethics, you know, our, our core values as physical therapists. One of the ones is to put the patient's needs, the push, the put the person's needs in front of our own. Is, is A, putting the person's needs in front of our own? Allowing the patient to pay out of pocket for additional therapy visits? Absolutely not. Why? Because even though the patient wants to, this isn't a need of the patient. And right now, we may be putting our own feelings, like we just want to please the patient. That's on us. Like we, we feel that way. We feel that obligation to please the patient, right? So it's not even doing it for them. It's doing it for the therapist. That's selfish behavior is what I'm saying. But even if we are allowing them to pay out of pocket for services they don't need, it's still unethical because now the company or whoever is benefiting from a financial standpoint. But again, the patient is not in need of the third services. It's unethical. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an X next to A. Doesn't make sense. Let's look at B. B is discharge the patient uh, to a home exercise program. I really like this answer. It's a commonly selected one as well. I like it because you're not ditching the patient here. You're still upholding your obligation to make sure that the patient gets everything that they need so we could take all the things that are working in therapy and that the patient likes and all that stuff and create a home exercise program. Patient still continues, still gets the benefit. They're just not getting direct physical therapy services in the clinic. I think it's a nice extension all right, it's a nice extension of physical therapy services that do, does not require the patient to be in-house. So what I'm going to do is put a nice check next to that. Doesn't mean it's the right answer. Let's continue down. C says, write a letter to the insurance company requesting more visits. Hmm. So in this situation, is it ethical for us to contact the insurance company and request more visits, even though the therapist knows that the patient doesn't need more therapy services. Now, here's the reason why it would really be a problem. Because when you are writing a letter to an insurance company to get authorization, which we do sometimes, definitely for our patients that need it, we write a letter of authorization. Um, that That's fine. Now, here's the thing. In that letter, you also have to justify the need of continued physical therapy services. So in this letter, I would have to be writing down why does this patient need it and all the different reasons and what are the benefits of therapy if they continue or what's going to happen if they don't continue. So you see how I would be making a huge behind lie on this letter that I'm sending to the insurance company, unethical behavior. So. Is C the correct answer? What do you think? Come on. For those of you on treadmill right now, just yell it out loud. Don't even matter. C is absolutely not right, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and knock that one out. Let's look at D. D says, treat the patient as a pro bono client. For those of you who are unfamiliar with pro bono, that's where we are going to treat the patient uh, for free. Um, that's where the patient doesn't have to pay. All right. Um, and then we're, yeah, we're providing our services for free. Is it okay to do this? Is it okay? The answer to this is even though the patient's not coming out of pocket for the services, we're still not upholding our professional duty. Do you know what professional duty is? And this is really important for this question. It's really all about professional duty. It's the commitment to meeting one's obligation 
to provide effective PT services. The commitment to meeting one's obligation to provide effective PT services. So if we get to the point where we understand that this patient's not going to benefit any longer from PT services or they've met everything that they need to meet, then we're not we're no longer going to provide effective PT services. We're going against our professional duty, one of our major core values. Therefore, D is not correct. Again, it goes against our professional duty. And I would say that with this question, it really comes down to core values like altruism, core values like integrity, doing what you say that you're going to do and, and being ethical about it, right? Um, and the other piece is your professional duty, which we talked about. Let me say that again, committing to meeting one's obligation to provide effective PT services. So a lot of these other answers, A, C, and D, they're all violating professional duty. Leaving us with our final answer of B, discharge the patient to a home exercise program. Let's get it. For those of you who got this question correct, congratulations. If you're tuning in on the podcast right now, there's one little extra piece I want to talk to you about, and, and that's going into the NPTE with an understanding of these core values. When I teach my, my, my students, I was going to say patients, oh my gosh, when I teach my students in the coaching program or if I teach a lecture or whatever it is, I always base the, the decisions off of principle, off of fundamentals, right? And what I would say is these core values that I'm talking about, which you can look up through the APTA, you can even go on Google and look up core values, physical therapy, and they'll list them out for you, right? Um, these are principles. These are like foundational just pillars that we make decisions as physical therapists. And I would say understanding those core values well will allow you to get a lot of questions right, especially when it comes to stuff like this, will allow you to get a lot of questions right just having an understanding of what we are to be doing as physical therapists, how we are supposed to act, how we're supposed to treat, what our obligations are, just having a really good understanding. It's one thing to know the word accountability. It's another thing to know what accountability really means and what it means for a physical therapist. It's one thing to hear the word professional duty and to be like, all right, professional duty is kind of like this, kind of like that. It's, it's one thing to, to know it from that perspective. It's another thing to understand it and be able to apply it as a physical therapist. Does that make sense? All right. So for those of you that are on the podcast right now, even those of you here live with me, that's one of my assignments to you. As Coach K to you directly, before you take the MPTE, take some time to carve out those core values and make sure you truly are able to articulate it to a classmate, to mom, dad, brother, sister, that would be great, to a layman or somebody who doesn't know these very well, to be able to articulate it and have them understand truly what a physical therapist obligations, what our roles are, and how we are to act when we're treating patients. Boom.